The movie starts as two modern-looking black men in their fancy underwear are being sold off at an auction. They are chained by their necks, and it appears as if the place is a slave market. Following this, the movie goes back into a flashback where it all started. It revolves around two estranged half-brothers, Regis and Joel Grosdesir, from the West Indies, who lead completely different lives. Joel is a monoracial black man fresh out of prison after serving time for stealing an old woman's purse. Currently, he lives with his mother and his nine-year-old daughter. He is serially unemployed and blames racism for all his woes, especially his joblessness. However, he has never seriously tried to find work. On the other hand, Regis is a biracial man. He is married to a white woman and has a nine-year-old daughter with her. He lives in an affluent town and is well integrated into the upper-class society. Regis is employed at the local town hall and works as an assistant to the mayor. One day, Regis receives a call from his uncle, informing him that his father is dying, and it is the old man's final wish to meet all his children. However, Regis pays no regard to his deadbeat father, as he was not around when Regis was a child. He then proceeds to have dinner with his family, but his crazy wife threatens to get laid with other men if he does not pay his father one last visit. She jumped to that specific threat awfully quickly. Left with no choice, he reluctantly agrees. The next day, Regis takes a flight to his hometown, where his father resides. At the airport, he runs into Joel, who has also come to see their father. The brothers, who have been out of contact for more than a decade, put their differences aside and hire a taxi together. They catch up in the taxi on the way to their father's home. Regis tells Joel everything about his successful life, while the latter lies to cover up his failures out of embarrassment. Upon reaching their father's home, they are introduced to their aunt and several half-sisters. Turns out that their dad ventured throughout the world and had relations with countless women. This explains why Joel and Regis have different skin colors. The old man's eyes light up when he sees his only two sons before him. Before dying, he tells Regis and Joel that they will inherit a great treasure. This excites the brothers, and they eagerly wait to hear about the treasure. However, to their dismay, all they receive as inheritance is the document of emancipation of their ancestors. This document was handed over to a few slaves by their owners for some extraordinary work or act. Apparently, Regis and Joel's ancestors were granted freedom long before slaves was legally abolished in the West Indies. However, not concerned about the symbolic value of this piece of paper, they scoff at the inheritance. They then derisively tear the paper up under the disapproving eye of their late father's sister. As expected, this enrages the old woman, so she decides to teach the brats a lesson. She casts a voodoo spell on them and sends them back to the 17th century, where slavery is still prevalent. In the next scene, when Regis and Joel wake up, they find themselves stripped down to their designer underwear in an open field. As the two wonder about what happened, a couple of terrified black people run past them. Just then, two slave hunters also arrive and capture the Grosdesir brothers. They are then taken to a slave market and sold to Monsieur Jourdain, a landowner. Jourdain entrusts Joel to the farms, where he will work under the care of Henri, a brutal and deeply racist foreman, while Regis is sent to the kitchens of the residence. Soon, the half-brothers discover that they have actually time-traveled to 1780, when when slavery was still a thing. The next day, the slaves are forced to listen to a priest who reads them a fake Bible about how black people should obey the whites. But since the Grostasir brothers are the only ones besides the whites who can read, they refuse to agree with the contents. Regis even surprises the priest by reading him a line from the book. Later in the day, Joel shows up late to the field and gets hit by Henri. Fed up with Henri's torture and behavior, Joel makes a run for it to escape the farm, but ends up hitting his head on a pole and knocking himself out. Due to his actions, he he is scourged in front of everyone. That night, Regis is called to Monsieur Jourdain's office, where his ability to read is acknowledged. Jourdain praises him for being a smart slave and gives him the privilege to control the other slaves with Henri. In the meantime, Joel is getting his wounds treated by a female slave, Rosalie. It has been only five minutes since they've met, but Joel has already started liking her. At an opportune moment, he leans in for a kiss. <laughs> only to get turned down. Rosalie then reveals that she is in love with a fellow slave named Isidore, much to Joel's disappointment. The next day, Regis carries out his new duty and starts ordering and commanding other slaves to do their work. Joel is shocked to see his brother acting like the Whites and criticizes him for being selfish. However, Regis could care less and he continues to be loyal to his new masters and reports his work throughout the day to Monsieur Jourdain. Eventually, everyone in the White household finds out about Regis's ability to read and starts 
starts mocking him. They also joke about whether or not he can play the piano. To everyone's surprise, Regis plays the piano beautifully. However, this results in him getting whipped severely by the whites. Finally fed up, Regis wants out, and the next morning, the two brothers flee the plantation by secretly hopping in the carriage of a Jewish man named Isaac. When they reach his place, Isaac approaches them and reveals that he knew about their presence all along. The brothers beg him for mercy, but to their surprise, Isaac provides them with great hospitality and care, as Jews are also a victim of discrimination. Soon, Monsieur Jourdain's henchmen arrive at Isaac's home in search of the two brothers. But before they could get caught, Regis and Joel bid Isaac farewell and flee through the back door. They make their way to the shoreline, where they take an abandoned boat and set out into the ocean. Ironically, they cross paths with a ship that is used to transport slaves to auctions and are caught and imprisoned. At last, the Gros de Seer brothers end up in the same slave market, where they are bought by Jourdain's henchmen. Fortunately, on the way back to the plantation, the brothers are saved by an African tribe who call themselves the Maroons. Here, it is revealed that the people of the tribe were all slaves once, before they fled from their owners. The two are welcomed into the tribe, and they began to chant with the tribe leader. However, Regis, who himself is married to a white girl, refuses to chant when the Maroons talk about killing the whites. This enrages the tribe, and they quickly turn on the brothers. But fortunately, Regis and Joel manage to outrun the tribe and reach safety. The next day, the two find themselves in an unknown place, where they see their aunt, who cast a spell on them. The brothers soon realize that it was she who was responsible for sending them back in time. They plead with her to remove the spell, and mention that they will do anything for it. Initially, the old woman refuses, but when the brothers keep pleading, she gives them a hint. She tells them that the only way for them to get back to the present is to reach the plantation again and reunite their ancestors, Isidore and Rosalie. She also tells them to rectify the error without elaborating any further. She's probably referring to Joel trying to make out with his great-great-grandmother. Before disappearing, the woman leaves behind her special pipe and instructs the brothers to smoke it when they have successfully completed their mission. As the two are brainstorming ways to tackle the situation, Joel suddenly remembers seeing what seemed like Isidore having oral intercourse with another man. He also recorded a video of the incident on his phone and shows it to Regis. Questionable move, Joel. The two brothers then become convinced that Isidore is homosexual, and they mistakenly believe that this is the error that they are supposed to fix. In the next scene, Joel and Regis return back to the plantation. They try to negotiate with Monsieur Jourdain on their punishment, but it doesn't work out for them. Instead, they get branded with a sigil of the plantation. They then return to their huts and begin to plan their course of action. Meanwhile, inside the mansion, the Whites are celebrating the wedding party of Monsieur Jourdain's daughter. Taking this as the perfect distraction, the brothers organize a party of their own for the slaves. They secretly steal a barrel of rum from the distillery to intoxicate and to activate the romance between Isidore and Rosalie. However, their plan hits a roadblock when Regis spots Joel making out with Rosalie due to his infatuation with her. Afterwards, the two brothers improvise and physically help the couple have intercourse as they're asleep. What? Once this is done, they are convinced that their mission there is accomplished. Believing that they can go home whenever they like, the brothers decide to take revenge on the Whites. They then make their way into the mansion, armed, where they humiliate everyone. Joel kisses the daughter of Monsieur Jourdain, whereas Regis starts damaging furniture and even slaps a white man. All of a sudden, Henri barges into the room with a gun and threatens the brothers. Still, Regis and Joel show no sign of fear and proceed to use the pipe. Unfortunately, when they smoke it, Nothing happens. It appears as if the magical pipe given by the old lady was replaced with an ordinary one. As a result of their deeds, they are locked in a cage and are condemned to execution the next day. That night, the brothers get emotional and start contemplating their life choices. Regis talks about his failing marriage, while Joel confesses that he is broke and jobless. After a few hours, as the brothers are still sympathizing with each other, Henri arrives and takes them out to the field where they are supposed to be hanged. However, right before the execution, Monsieur Jourdain's son, Victor, runs off into the forest as he cannot bear watching the sight. Rosalie chases after him and soon finds out that he has fallen into the nearby river. All members of the family panic and run to the scene. However, Isidore takes advantage of the uproar and saves the brothers, knocking out Henri in the process. He then orders them to run for their lives, to which they oblige. As the brothers flee, they come across Victor, who is being swept by the stream. Without a second thought, the two jump into the dangerous river. But to Regis's surprise, Joel cannot swim 
swim. This makes his task even more difficult, but somehow, he manages to save both his brother and Victor. Grateful to the brothers for saving his son's life, Monsieur Jourdain sets them free. The half-brothers are also awarded with the very same document of emancipation that they were provided with by their late father. However, instead of accepting the freedom and the award, they request Monsieur Jourdain to free Isidore and Rosalie and present them with the document. The Monsieur finds the request very strange, but nonetheless, he obliges. In this way, the brothers have managed to free Isidore and Rosalie, but they still don't know where to find the magical pipe, which will help them return back to the modern age. With days passing by, they slowly begin to accept that they may never return to their time. One day, Isidore and Rosalie wish the brothers farewell and leave the plantation with the papers. As the two watch them leave from afar, Henri approaches them and orders them to get back to work. He then takes out his pipe and starts smoking. When he tries to humiliate the brothers by blowing smoke in their faces, they suddenly disappear, much to the astonishment of Henri. This indicates that Henri was the one who stole the pipe from them. In the next scene, the brothers return back to the present, where they see their aunt beside them. When they see her holding the original document in her hand, Regis and Joel become relieved. Several months pass by. Joel finds a regular job on a construction site, where he still complains about his minimum wage and that it has to do with him being black. Meanwhile, Regis returns to his work at the town hall. One day, as he is about to leave his office, he greets the mayor, who passes a racist joke. Regis, being no longer the person he once was, decides to stand up to the mayor before storming off. The scene then cuts to Regis and his wife, along with Joel and his mother, chatting in Regis's living room. The two agree that the adventure they had brought them closer as a family, but an argument between their respective daughters leads to the tearing of the document of emancipation. The movie ends as the two brothers run towards their daughters in panic. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.